process may be tough the process may be rough i'm gonna wait 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 for the product to be strong for it to last i'm gonna wait pray and stay process may be rough the process may be tough i'm gonna wait 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 for the products to be strong for you to last i'm gonna wait Normally fast and pray to have breakthrough. Yet we break our fast with Gary. 
Why can't we break our fast with good meal? Why? Why? I can't take this any longer. Ah, I'm so dumb. What do you mean? What are you done with? With everything. I'm done with everything. Everything? Look, I'm done with our lives. This lifestyle, I'm done with it. I'm done with our family. I'm done even with ministry. I'm done. This is not the kind of life I want to live. Here we go again. My dear, just yesterday night, we dwelt so much on this matter. And I told you with all assurance that God's promises for our life will be fulfilled. Just a matter of time. And keep trusting in Him. Look, we will surely have powerful testimonies. Enough. Enough of this same unprofitable message of encouragement. When exactly is our type going to turn? When are we going to stand tall in the midst of our mates and siblings? When? When will our children look well radiant and nourished? And be proud of us as their parents? In fact, when are we going to live our lives without any altar of struggle? This is not the kind of life I bargained for. Ah. What kind of life did you wish to live? Do you have a lot to be grateful and thankful unto God? Ah. You are happily married. There are some sisters out there trusting and praying to God to have their husband. And you have beautiful children, brilliant ones for that matter. Eh? While some are out there, mountain, prayer meetings, everywhere, praying to just have one. And, and what? Ending our conversation abruptly. Look, you always give me reasons every time to think and come to the realization that I've actually changed from Sister Tony I married. Now, tell me, what kind of life do you wish for? When will our struggle end? 14 years of marriage. Ah, ah. When are we going to use cars that befits us as ministers of the gospel? When are we going to live in a good house that we make men to bow to our God? When are we going to travel far and wide to propagate the beauty of God's service like others that are traveling all over? Ah, when? Hmm. Can you just listen to yourself? When? When did we start using men, people, as yastic for our progress in life? Because the day the children of Israel asked for a king like other nations, God was not happy with them. Because they rejected him and his leadership. We should be very careful and meticulous. Not to envy or emulate others. God hates that. This is Tatalani. I knew I met before I married. 
was a godly sister with godly vision. She had a great passion for evangelism and the kingdom of God. She was our sister coordinator. Our message has changed many lives. These people are now on their way to the kingdom of God. In our early marriage, she promised to support the ministry without any reservation. She was never anxious about what who is. Rather, she appreciated God and trusted Him as our only source of provision. But this is the colony I see now has changed drastically. She is now so materialistic and too ambitious, craving for things beyond her financial capability, placing others as pedestal for her progress in life. Why are you so impatient? Hasty and rebellious against the promises of God for our lives. Why do you want to allow the worldly pleasure to influence your love and your vow for me? Is it because I have not been able to meet your expectations? But you must not forget that godliness with contentment is a great gift. Enough! Don't give me that! Godliness with contentment is a great gain. When men of God like you wants to convince themselves that you are not failures, that is when you quote such scriptures. So, the men of God that are doing well, they are not practicing the word godliness with contentment, being great gain. Or do I tell you that I don't know that the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain? Oh yes. I don't dispute that. But how many of them will come to you to tell you how many years they have spent in the wilderness before they become what they are now? We all see them riding good cars, living in beautiful houses, as you have said. Have you forgotten that all these men of God you are talking about also had their own wilderness as well to pass through? Please, let's keep praying to God that we will come out of our successfully. So tell me. For how long are we going to walk through this wilderness experience before our lives will become what we want it to be? Taba for do me wa pile were igba wo gan la fe bugije. My dear, you need to be very calm. Tough time never last, but tough people do. Many of these prosperous preachers we are talking about also have their own story to tell, and most of their wives didn't behave like this. But they were patient for the glory of God to manifest and endure with much affliction with their husbands. Were you there? How did you know the way their wives reacted? Ewo, I le soroni bereri buruku o. Emi konte mi. It will not be my portion. You better stop fooling yourself. My dear, why are you so? Speaking ignorantly like a woman who is conformed to the image of the world. Who have no knowledge of Christ? Huh? I'm talking as if I don't have knowledge of Christ. It has got into that. No problem. As if this world is a permanent place of abode. Are we no longer going to that beautiful heaven again? You always preach about that, don't you? What do I hear you say? Beautiful what? Beautiful heaven! <laughs> okay. Are we not going to live well here before going to that beautiful heaven? Hey! Mr. Man of God, sir. I can see that you were born to suffer. What? Oh, excuse me, please. Yes, ma'am. There is this woman that preaches outside there every morning. Okay, ma'am. Have you seen her lately? Uh, that's true. No, ma. I've not seen her, ma. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, ma. Have a nice day, ma. Thank you. 
I will not allow you or this marriage to ruin my glorious destiny. Ewo, emilo go. She motu moru komeni, omoto lani, moto lani. Ti oru koti yon la ti de, ti o baro yon. Tori a mok bato la yon ma de. E ma koti yon ram yon. Jesu, o bagbe le pro. Ki le ma to o le yon. O to shi a te ni e gan. On lo un bo bo foun. Bi ni mi bo bo shegbe. Ti e ro mi bo bo pin. Si be o lo ro ni mo je. Le me ni krist a to ron. To la ni le ma wa ala mi. Ah! Yo mo me su mo ni. He don't worry about me. My dear, that language is too derogatory. It's not expected of you as a good Christian wife. I'm more than not to talk of the leader of the Christian Women Fellowship profess. I beg you, scare me please. Just scare me. I don't want to hear that. I don't need that trash. Hmm. What is it again? My dear, I forgive you for that statement. I count it as an error from your lip. I am not born to suffer. And I will not suffer in Jesus' name. Moreover, such utterance does not show love, care, and respect. Ah, oh, my dear husband. You see what I'm explaining to you? Do you want to understand? Is that I realized that you are born to suffer. And I, Omotolani, I'm no longer ready to suffer with you. So, you better do something about it. Do something about it so that you can make our life prosperous. You, 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 this my wife. <laughs> you are a very good actress. Yeah. And I will inquire about this association called Ansidra. Or take you to the institute to go and learn about Christian drama ministry. Yeah. You see, I can see the potential of a good dramatist in you. What a good ministry. You are a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. again. Please talk to me. You're asking me? <laughs> I'm crying because you're not taking me serious. I'm crying because you think I'm joking. Me? Ah, you take me for an address today. I'm not joking here. Is it that you find something to do? Or you become a divorcee? 
I'm assuring you, you will become a pastor without a wife. What? That will never be possible in Jesus' name. No problem. Wait and see. Wait and see. Wait and see. My dear, why are you always talking like this? When did you suddenly develop all these strange evil thoughts? Who are your friends? Oh, you call it strange evil thoughts? Yes. Uh, I'm not blaming you at all. You are free to say any trash. Since you lack common financial freedom mentality. What? Mentality. Yes. Me? <laughs> Today, you must not be angry. You are a Christian. Don't allow a woman's rage provoke you. You need to maintain your cool. Ola, today, calm down. You still have the fruit of the spirit. Calm down. So, what makes you think I lack financial freedom mentality? Since you don't know that money is very important and paramount to life. Since you don't think we need to enjoy while serving in ministry. Since you see people that speak about money in the church as people that are not heaven bound. Yet you have forgotten that money is a defense. And money has at all things. All things. Okay. What do you think we should do now? You know I love you so much. And I trust God to make everything beautiful for us in his time. When is the time? Can't you see what your mates have? Here we go again. My mates. Look, the word of God admonishes us never to compare ourselves with others. Because people that do such are not wise. Second Corinthians 10 12. It is not comparison. I am only stating the obvious. You have more than three minister friends whose ministries are booming. Can't you go to them to inquire? Or now yours will be prosperous as well. Please, 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 please. Do not compare me with other pastors. Ministry is not for comparison. It is not a competition or rivalry, but a divine calling. I have mine and they have theirs. My dear, you want me to consult men when God has beautiful, wonderful promises for us. The promises of God for us, they are here and amen. They can never fail. All the promises God made to Moses all came to pass. None was for naught. Oh yes, I know. I'm a daughter of the kingdom who believes so much in the promises of God. Look, I believe before I married you. As I am, I still believe. I only want it to manifest quickly. I also believe that the promises will come to pass. Please don't misunderstand me. That is why we need to continue praying, trusting God, and looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set for him endured the cross, despising the shame. Here we go again, my dear. Don't be too rigid and adamant. I know the scripture as well. Nobody is a polymath. There's no evil in asking about ministry from your friends who are prospering and getting results quickly. But my dear, you know we are not lazy. We are doing this work of evangelism with all our art. We go for evangelism regularly. We pray for people and we do everything that is needed to be done to make things work. Doesn't that qualify us as not being lazy? Of course. That is the more reason why you need to go to them and inquire on how yours will be prosperous. Probably we are not doing things rightly. We are not doing things the right way? I don't believe that. We are doing things the right way, which is biblical. Maybe we should ask ourselves, if we are doing this work, with the right mind and right motives. By the way, my dear, 
you have forgotten to go for evangelism today? I did not forget. But I just don't feel like. Moreover, we have so many evangelists out there who go for evangelism. The fact that I choose not to go today does not mean the work will suffer. God can choose to use another person. Well, let's leave that one apart. Let's settle our significant issues first. Evangelism can wait. That won't give me money. Issues? What issues? I'm talking about money. Read my lips. Money. I need money. You and this issue of money. The process <laughs> may be tough. Money will the not swallow you, Jesus. The process may be rough. I'm gonna wait. 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 So, as I was saying, and uh, as we have just read in this uh, daily devotion, there's nothing that is impossible with God. We have seen it in the life of Sarah. At a very good old age, God gave her a miracle baby. That's right. Also, in the life of Elizabeth, God gave her a miracle baby. I will see the miracle baby, the same miracle in Jesus. So, God told us, and the Bible tells us that with God, nothing shall be impossible. So, let this be our key as we go out today. That our God is a God of all possibility. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Please pray, Mom. And so, Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, mighty Jesus. Thank you for feeding us with your word. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray as we go, you will go with us in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Let your word work for us in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Make things to be possible for us in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good morning, Good morning sir. God bless you this day. You too. Have Amen. a lovely day. God bless you. Too. 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 Ah, I'm so honored to have you in my home, man of God. Uh, you are very much welcome. I've actually come to you on something that demands my immediate alacrity to save my home and my ministry. I'm all here. Uh, should we go to the church office or talk here? Uh, my wife has gone to work and the children have left her school already. In fact, I was on the verge of going to the office when you came in. Let us discuss here, man of God. Please, take your drink. Oh, thank you, sir. Even Brother Dotun, our general secretary in fellowship back on campus, is now a notable bishop. I turned down his love proposal because of my conviction that Allah today is God's way for me. Now, what is my gain? I should have been smarter. I'm more discreet about my decision back then because Brother Dotson has always been a very smart type. Anyway, at this juncture, Alatishimi, Loma Matishi Arai. Yes. With all you have said, I can sense some demonic manipulations at work here. But we must be wiser than the devil. Mm. You see? Everyone loves good things, especially women. <laughs> they like to live a frivolous and flamboyant lifestyle, spend the way they like, and drive exotic cars. Even when they are aware of the family's financial status, <laughs> my brother, women love to be pampered, except those who have been completely broken by the word of God to live a simple lifestyle. Sir, can you please be honest with me? Has your wife ever shouted at you because of money matter at any point in time? Yeah, several times. We were still struggling. But that is not the case again. God has been so faithful. He has been blessing us. Moreover, she is more mature than broken. 
we have suffered a serious financial lack in this house and ministry. But thank God, we were able to overcome with patience and perseverance. That time, I was so desperate about the issue of growth in our ministry. So, I prayed and fasted to seek God's help in this regard. And God revealed to me through dreams that if we want the work done in His way, we cannot outrun Him to bless us at His own time. My brother, we went to the mountain sowing seed of prayers for breakthrough and increase. We met other men of God who taught us the formulas for breakthrough and growth. Some were disappointed. Why some were alarming? Alarming? Ah, uh, <laughs> yes! God revealed to me the secret of one of the men of God that taught us the formula for quick growth and breakthrough. Hmm. I'll tell you what. I dreamt that I entered into a beautiful place of worship where I want to belong. But shortly, I started sinking. Hmm. I quickly grasped a, a pillar I saw to get myself steady. But unfortunately, it collapsed. I struggled so much for survival in that dream. And with the help of God, I came out uninjured. <laughs> I woke up gasping and sweating. Then the Spirit of God revealed to me that though a ministry could be glowing outside, it could still be a death trap. So, my brother, in ministry, we should always allow the leadership of the Holy Spirit in our decision and whom to follow. Never to be moved or thrilled by what we see. Not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God except those who do the will of my Father. Says Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. As for the followership and membership, I will be contented with God and do my best in terms of outreaches and evangelism to fulfill the ministry committed into my hand. Again, I met another so-called man of God with several branches and membership consisting of about 5,000 people. He gave me his card and fixed an appointment with me. Good day, Dad. Oh, good evening. It's me. Please, I'm going to see your guy. He's expecting me. Oh, God, no, I have an appointment with him. He, I, my vehicle developed a fault. I will have been here earlier. Oh, God, don't come up 40 minutes ago. You know, they are around. I, I, did he go to night vigil? I can go and join him there. I won't the, take no. I'll be rich. Ha. This is an opportunity for me. Yeah. I saw oh, God, no, the, I go release God. Come back here. Go to the next street. Number 13. The gate is open. Okay. You will see him there. Okay. Go now. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Go, go. We. Wa. Wa, wa, wo, wo. Go, go. We. Wa. Wa, wa, wo, wo. Go, go. We. Wa. Wa, wa, wo, wo. Jezebel. Yes, my lord. Corruption. Indecent dressing. Yes, my lord. The great mammon is expecting a result from you. You are already in the church. So, intensify your efforts and make sure you destroy the church of God. You artificial men of God. Yes, my lord. You need to also intensify your efforts. Bring more I mean more men of God into this kingdom. Do you understand? Yes, yes. so be it. <sighs> I never knew he was in the court. <laughs> I managed to escape and lodge somewhere till the next morning. Moinyu could not believe all I narrated to her about the so-called man of God in court. <laughs> Since then, my brother, I have learned to follow God's direction without looking left or right. The fact that it glitters does not mean it's gold. My co-laborer in the vineyard of God, don't be lazy about what you are called 
out to do in life and ministry. Do the work that will stand the test of time in ministry. The Lord is your strength. Pray more and talk to your wife. I will implore Moni, my wife, to also talk to her. The Lord will give her understanding to allow you run the race accordingly. Thank you, man of God. I really appreciate this peace from you. It has really calmed down my nerves. And I pray it will be a productive you know, solution to what is raging my home. Thank you, Lord. But this is deep. It's just that I'm afraid of going home now because Tolani is so desperate. <sighs> or should I also go to Pastor Dennis? After all, the Bible says, out of two or three mouths, the truth shall be established. Let me try Pastor Dennis too. Let me give it a try. Ah, yeah. Hello, Pastor Dennis. Hello, man of God. Good afternoon, sir. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Please, are you in the office? Mm, I am in the office now, but I'm preparing to attend a meeting. Uh, can you be in my office before 3 p.m.? Okay, sir. Right away. Thank you, sir. The process may be tough, the process may be rough, I'm gonna wait, 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 I'm coming now, the product to be strong, for it to last, I'm gonna wait, why are you smiling, why are you smiling, <laughs> it's just a funny thought, it just came to my mind that people will see you dressed like a good woman. But no one will know you have been giving me tough time in the house. Ah. What kind of thought is that? Are you mocking me? You know what? I'm not going to church again. Ah, why? Ah, ah, my dear. It's just a joke to ease your dark mood. I will not accept your apology or plea. Unless you agree to kneel to beg me in front of the church. Ah, what? Kneel before the church. Deal or no deal? Be not know this up. Look at our neighbor. They see me kneeling down for you. Begging you. Shout it. Uh -uh. This is not fair now. Deal or no deal. What a wonderful discovery. What a powerful discovery. Thank you, Jesus, for this word of God. Thank you for this revelation. Ah, I worship you. I came to this. Ah, it will happen. Ah, my dear. Ah, ah. Come and see the discovery I discovered the word of God. The word of God is awesome. The word of God is powerful. Please, can we just agree together on this my new discovery? Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. My dear, you are not even supportive. I said we should agree together on my new discovery. Discovery? Yes. That's good. Can you believe what the Bible says? In, in what? Excuse me. Eh, hey, discovery le. You better launch into the deep. Launch into the deep of wealth creation and prosperity. Launch into the deep of evident financial breakthrough. Launch into the deep of grace. Of receiving from people that are committed and consistent. Ha! Kumada, can your money, destiny help us in ministry? I want help you on the way. I want help you on the way, my dear. That's why we must not faint in prayers. That's why we must agree together in prayer. In fact, that's why we should agree together in prayers now. Help you come. But we cannot agree now. Why? Says who? We are not in good terms. Simple. Amos 3.3 says can two work together? I said they agree. 
What is the cause of our disagreement? I want you. Money is the problem. It's gonna make all things beautiful in this time. But my dear, why are you always frustrating me? Anyway, maybe I should leave in order to stop frustrating you. Leave? Leave to where? Leave to allow you to face your discovery. My dear, why are you always intimidating me? Tormenting and looking down on me because of this modernity called money. Ha! You this man. You call money modern thing? What this family and even your ministry consistently lack is this money. Yet you call it mundane. Please, don't get angry or worked up because of this mundane thing. I still insist, it is a modern thing. Ha! We may lack it now, but we are not poor. And my God is able. He is bigger. He will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Then let your God do it now. You dear God? I'm not daring God. I'm rather daring you. I'm still sensible and reasonable. I'm not daring God at all. But putting all our deeds on him is what I dislike. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledging, and it shall direct your path. Psalm 125 verse 1 says, Those that trust in the Lord shall be as Mazan, which cannot be removed, but abide it forever. And Philippians 4.19 says, But my God, my God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Even those things we can get on our own if we have our own money. What can we get ourselves if God does not give to us? You see in this life, some are born with silver spoon. You don't envy them if they live in big houses or drive all manners of flashy cars. Why some make their money and riches through business and work in corporate offices? You can't use them as yardstick to measure our own lifestyle. We are working with God the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe, the richer than the richest. Let's wait on him and trust in him and be faithful to him to supply all our needs in due time. So sorry, mommy. I hope we are not intruding to your private quiet time. Ah, uh, not at all. Please excuse me. All right. It's gonna make all things beautiful in this time. Outside the
My pleasure. You shouldn't have bought that. It was actually my wife's decision that we both pay you a visit. Oh, that's great, my sister. Thank you, ma. <laughs> I really appreciate your visit. You're welcome. And how is your marriage? Mommy, marriage is sweet, though. Mm -hmm. It's good to marry a right person at the right time. Mm. I really appreciate your prayer, man. You can say that again, my sister. That's the beauty of marriage. Getting married to the right person at the right time. Ah, in fact, I congratulate you. That is absolutely true, Mommy. You know, uh, the Lord has really been madman most to me. I have enjoyed total submission from this wonderful lady the Lord has given unto me. And thank God for His word. His word is ye and amen. And thank God because you are an epitome of submissiveness even in this kingdom and I think my wife got this straight from you. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you. Ah, I just love that testimony. Especially for the fact that it's coming from your husband. That's good. I just want to tell you my sister you should keep submitting to your husband. The more you do that, the better your home will be. And for you too, my brother, keep loving her. In fact, she needs your love every day. Well, thank you so much, Mommy. I believe uh, with your word of encouragement, my wife's day has already been made. <laughs> thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. God bless you richly, Ma. I really appreciate your efforts, Ma. Thank you so much, Mommy. Mm -hmm. Mommy, thank you so much, ma. This is a token for you and yeah. that. Ah, hey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I will deliver it to daddy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful. Thank you, mommy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think we can be on our way now. Please, you can take your water along. <laughs> thank you. Mommy in the Lord. What a beautiful display of maturity there. In fact, you have cancelled them right. But mommy in the Lord, are you really submitting to your husband the way you have cancelled them? I am talking to you. You have not answered my question. What question is it for me to answer? Anyway, why didn't you pray for them? You are supposed to pray for them and commit their home and marry into God's hand. You see, whenever anybody comes to you as a counselor or as a pastor's wife, you need to pray for them and commit their marriage into the hand of God. That's one of the qualities of a good pastor's wife. It is one of the ethics I taught you. But you are not putting into practice. Yet, you collected the envelope. Anyway, Give it to me. Give me the envelope because you have promised to deliver unto me. So, give it to me. In fact, we really need to sow a seed unto God urgently. Eh? Don't even go there. Because I will not give you this envelope. Were you the one that cancelled them? Were you the one that attended to them? It's not possible. My dear, you and this your unhealthy love for money. <laughs> You really need to calm down. You need to calm down. Come to think of it. You are not like this. Few years back. Hmm. Yes. I was not like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen years back. Because that time, I was so naive and gullible. But now, my eyes are open. I'm more matured and wise. Oh, do me till I, if you meet she, oh, 
Ola mi ko le da. Owo Olorun lojo Ola to dara wa. With him the future is secured. No one can guarantee a better future for him or herself. Many who planned for the future without God didn't get there. Loss of pensioner have been denied their entitlements and benefits. So, trusting in the Lord is still the most dependable venture by sowing in tears and reaping in joy for better harvest. Anyway, I'm not interested in the money if you not allow to sow unto God to reap better. But may I ask you, why did you lock me inside the room? May I also ask, when are you going to pass for Dennis, please? <sighs> He's gonna make all things beautiful in his time. I'll please save me off these unrealistic ways of life. In the book of life, and I believe the Bible, the word of God, the word of truth, and that I will follow till the end of my life. So, I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation that has been called out of darkness into its marvelous light. No pressure from you, no low financial status. We make you to follow Pastor Dennis to where you are asking me to go with him. I will never follow Pastor Dennis. In fact, I will never go with him and I will never follow him. Do you know where he even asked me to go? I don't even care. You don't care. By the time you are done, you will care. In fact, it is unimaginable, unthinkable. An unexpected of a man of God. How can a man of God go to an abbalist all because he needed money to fund ministry? Ah, he needs God. And I've been praying to God for him to have mercy upon him because he must be delivered. And he told me, I'll be requested to bring something so very dear to me for the sacrifice. Do you know the ritual sacrifice? Okay, you are the one. Ah! Me? Yes. God forbid. Never! Ah! These people are wicked, though. No problem. I will take you there. They will use for the sacrifice. I will get money and I will be spending the money. No baton. Ah! Me? This terrible people. That is trying to calm down. You see, aside from people using gimmicks and devilish wisdom to raise funds and money in the church, some even go to the extent of using their manhood, their wives, their children, immoral ladies, covetous virgin, and sleeping with mad women, all because they wanted money. But I will not do any of such because I'm a child of God. And no child of God with any one of you will go to that extent because he wanted money. I am not possessed by mammon spirit and I will not be because anyone who has been possessed with mammon will want money at all costs. My dear, do not be possessed with mammon spirit in this age and time when the coming of Lord is at hand. The world is expecting the Son of God. He can appear anytime. 
do not be possessed with mammon spirit in this age and time when the love of many is waxing cold and sin is on the rise do not be possessed with mammon spirit in this age and time when terrorism insurgency and banditry is all over the world and has put the world in confusion don't be possessed with mammon spirit in this age and time when microchip is being prepared ready to be inserted into the foyer or into the hands of people my dear don't lose your faith cheaply in this age and time because of love of money ah. i just pray i just pray you will not be possessed with mammon spirit in this end time and you know means is coming in the name of jesus to remain poor ah, there should be a way around it there should be a way the process may be tough the process may be rough I'm gonna wait 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 for the product to be strong for he to last, I'm gonna wait. Bring her back. Bring her back. She has been drifted away from you because of mammon, because of money. The Holy Ghost will arrest you back to her himself. In the name of Jesus, Tolani, whatever is contending with you, in the name of Jesus, they are defeated. In the name of Jesus, for it is easy. Oh God, contend with you that contend with me. Every that contend with Tolani in the heart that is making her to misbehave, I bring you down. Every stronghold in the heart of Tolani, I pull you down. I pull you down. I pull you down. In the name of Jesus, I pull you down. Tolani, you will not go astray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. As I've committed the act of tolerance as God, you have taken over. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Tolani, you are a test of faith to me. But I know I will overcome you in the name of Jesus. Tolani. You are an examination unto me. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I will triumph over you in testimony. In the name of Jesus. Your behavior, your attitude, your lifestyle will not make me fall. I will not misbehave. In the name of Jesus. I will not be arrogant. I will not be angry. I will not even beat you. In the name of Jesus, no matter the extent of your provocation, I will overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ, I possess the spirit of patience to undo you, dear Tolani. In the name of Jesus Christ, I possess the spirit of perseverance to deal with you in the house. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive grace to tolerate you more than ever before. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. The process may be tough. The process. Accountant. Yes, sir. And Nedosha. Yes, sir. I called you today to see me personally because of my observation about tight. Why are people not paying tight? What do you propose? Oh, can I speak freely, sir? Why not? Speak freely. Oh, sir, people enjoy biblical teachings and sermon because it inspires them. But nevertheless, the Lord paying their tithe and offering to a ministry that prophesying to their life. The Lord paying it to a prophet that see vision and do miracle and other things, sir. More so, sir, some people still not understand the 
issue of the tithe. Maybe they need more teaching on it. We can't stay on the chair of tithe all the time. This should be an obligation for a good Christian. Not everyone understands this. Sir, some people think it will be too much for you as a pastor if everyone pay their tithe all the time. But that is erroneously absurd. Do I even get anything from the account or tithe they pay? Accountant, you know the details. Give us details of last month's income. Okay, uh, sir, from the church record of his last month, we realized 258,000 naira. We deducted 25,800 as tithe of tithe payable to the high priest in the ministry. Okay, 188,000 as wages of all church staffs and sanctuary keeper who are no volunteers. And we gave out 105,000 as welfare to widows and orphans. You even spend more than the income? Uh, yes, please. We even use from the maintenance offering to balance up as directed by the pastor, sir. So what is left for the pastor? Mm, nothing. So can you see that it's when the tithe comes in in excess that the pastor himself can have something to take home. But that's not my priority. Let me Church is going to grow and win his soul to the kingdom. That is what gives us reward. If you are not paying tithes, please repent and do the useful. Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, Amen. sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. God bless you. Yes, sir. Accountant. Yes, sir. Please let me see you. Are you who go to where they see Bishop and prophesy for them? <laughs> sir, it is obvious, sir. Yeah. Now, tell me, do you also patronize those that see vision and pray for you? Do you also pay your tithe? You see? I enjoy to please repent. And those who are not being tight, repent and do this for the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Excuse me, she ti ba mi ri arabirin to preach ni bi bayi. Oh, la si gba yen. Ha ma ri won. Ha de mo kan to sele. Ah. Oh my god. O ko li zo omo. Well, all is well. Emi Olorun lo ni ki fun arabirin to wa sun ni. Ni gbogbo nkan to wa ni kawo mi. Because I have to relocate to uh, UK. My, my mind was to sell everything, but I have to obey the Holy Spirit. Yes. But oh, it's a pity now. Me money won. Me the one learn it only number one. Thank you, my dear. Well, you welcome. Ma. Thank you. God bless. Do you have a safe trip. We will miss you. Thank you. I will miss you, you, ma. <laughs> we will miss you, ma. Thank you, my dear. Bye, bye, ma. All right. Enjoy your day. Bye. Jesu ni koni ono o tito ati ye ko se ni to le wa sodo baba bi ko se ni pa se Jesu Kristi wa gba wa gba wa gba Jesu sa ye re o akiri sore wa gba wa gba wa gba Jesu sa ye re o akiri sore we wa kunrin gba Jesu ni Oluwa ti Olugbala arabirin yan and you know, I got just to know what to look at. Just to the God, you know. Oh, Tito, I see you. Wada, Wada, Wada.
into such business, sir. I never knew. My sister, you courted a brother for almost a year and a half. Yet, you didn't suspect that he is an internet froster. He hid it from me, sir. I never suspected him. Did you question his excessive spending and source of his wealth? You are too enamored and God distracted by it. Now, it has dawned on you that not all that glitters is gold. This thing has to stop, sir. I would really appreciate if you can come. Please. You have to give me some time. I'll come and talk to him. The Lord will protect you. Amen. In his house, you will not be suffered unto that ship. Amen. You will not be used to increase his wealth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Ritual power will not succeed over you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. The process may be tough. The process may be wrong. Do not venture into any business. God has not told you to do so. Although it is good to have a business in order to support the ministry than to be a beggar. But likewise, it must be on God's leading in order not to miss the calling. On the contrary, most ministers of God have a side business generating income for them. However, if God does not allow you to work, why not allow your wife to work and earn money that can take care of the family and probably to sustain the ministry? She is into evangelism, sir. Then if she is into evangelism, encourage her to do it well. It has an eternal reward and God will never forget a labor of love. 
you see in the ministry we have the working class ministers and the full-time ministers the full-time working class and the part-time working class you have to abide by the calling of god for your life peter wished to walk he liked to fish but the master didn't allow him he only wanted him to become a fisher of men rather than that of fish he asked him three times in the book of john chapter 21 do you love me than this peter said you know lord the master replied him by saying feed my sheep jesus saw the ambition of peter to go back to fishing but he wanted him to be a fisher of men the sin was not for paul you know paul had been working before he joined the ministry while in the ministry serving the lord diligently he still practiced tent making to support himself in the ministry so can you see that it depends on the calling of God and his permission to either work or not. But this does not give room for laziness but getting his approval and direction. So as not to get lost or miss it in the ministry. However, those working should not look down on those who are not working. And they should not be arrogant or boastful or trust in their wealth. But in God who gives us all things richly to enjoy. They should be humble, lowly and trust God more in fulfilling the ministry. My brother, remain focused and be diligent. God's reward will surely come someday. Amen. Amen. But sir, has your wife ever been rude to you or shouted at you because of money matter before? Me, Shege. Eh? I haven't seen that woman that will shout at me because of money. Eh? That's the end of her life. You know now, I will finish her. You know how we do these things. <laughs> you know now. No, no, either it will not happen. It can never happen. Ah. Oh, yes, my brother. Some women in the only capacity differs from one another. Some may be quiet and keep praying and trusting God with you. Why some may become violent to get things done. But either way, please don't fight with your wife. You cannot win the battle by agreement. Shouting and getting furious all the time. But you can overcome by praying for her. Women have this force and power to want things done their own way. And God may not rebuke them for such, you know wise and diplomatic to consider their options and bring them under all the time when sarah told abraham to take her servant as a wife god didn't say anything when sarah in turn told abraham to chase her away god didn't say no to abraham likewise when the wife of job told job to cause god and die because of the problem of life god didn't rebuke job's wife or ask Job to send his wife away because of that. So we must be careful with women because God may be silent at their outrageous decision or suggestions. of every woman is money. I mean, just like uh, the problem of every church is also money, you know? And you know, I pay my dues regularly to the church. I pay my offering, I pay my tithes, and I make sure that we do not lack anything in this house. Even my wife, she doesn't lack anything. So I, I don't know why she's so hell-bent in frustrating me. Why? I've told you to stop saying that. It is not right. Anyway, it is because you don't know the word of God. Will you keep quiet there? Hmm? I'm talking to the man of God there. You're, you're, you're putting your mouth. I will not keep quiet. Don't shut me up. Sister. Oh. Don't shout at your husband. Thank you, sir. You see, that's how she shouts at me every day. You know, at some point I thought uh, that's how you teach people in your church to shout at their husband. Oh, no. We don't teach our women. To disrespect or disregard their husband, irrespective of what happened in the house. Mm -hmm. But she shouts at me every day. Every day. Whenever any small issue comes up between us, she shouts. Sister, 
don't because of issue in the house lose the fruit of the spirit in your life you have to respect your husband as the bible says the husband is the head of the house as christ is the head of the church he is the representative of christ so you have to respect him as the head of the house he is your head mm. Mm. thank you so much sir uh -uh. I don't know you preach this much truths of the word of God in your church. You see, this woman, she never respects me in this house. She disrespects me always. She had never seen me as the head of this home. And you said representative of Christ. Hmm. That's a revelation. That's deep. You see, sir, I respect you more. What is this? Ah, no, no, don't do that. No, it's for you, sir. It's for you. It's for you, sir. Uh, it is, uh, you know, for for speaking the truths, you know, deep revelation of the word of God, and also to appreciate and encourage you not to relent in the work of God you're doing. Thank you, sir. Anyway, thank you. However, we don't give money for such reasons. Let's settle the reason why I've come here. Your life must be settled. And your marriage must be settled to enjoy God's peace. Pastor, please accept it. Don't worry. See, our home will be settled. In fact, it is settled already. Abby, my dear, is it not uh, settled? Your life is not safe until you have surrendered to Jesus Christ. Pastor, your life is set it. Set it. <laughs> but you all know. What is this, Auntie? That's all his money. He asked me to pay it in the church as tight. You mean you've not been paying my tithes all the way? Yes. Why? Because I cannot pay the tithe of this type of business to God in our church. Our pastor preaches against it. So you've been the one denying me of God's blessing by not paying my tithe in the church? Huh? Woman, you've been hindering my breakthrough in all of my businesses all the while? What business? What business? Tell the pastor. Tell him the kind of business you are into. And what is your business with my business? Huh? Eh? See, Pastor, business is business. My business with your business is that your business is not legitimate and pure. Everyone who is the gain of unrighteousness is not of God. Hmm. Pastor, can you hear her? Can you, can you see the way she's talking to me? Pastor, did you hear when he said the problem of all women is money? Just as the problem of all churches is money. That is his catchphrase. In fact, that is his slogan. But I detest it. It is not all women that has an inordinate love for money. All I want is a godly and a happy home. We are not happy. In fact, I am not happy in this marriage. What arrant nonsense are you spilling out with your mouth? What else do you want me to do for you? Like I give you money, you buy whatever you want, you go out there on your social outing, you spend money, you spend money for your families as well. In fact, you step out, you drive any kind of car you want. What else do you want? If not that, and you claim not to be happy. Eh? News flash. It is not money that makes a home a happy place. It is love, respect, and companionship. But you are always not available. You do not love me, neither are you always here for me to enjoy and feel the companionship. This is not the kind of bliss I bargained for in my marriage. And to crown it all, you deceived me that you were a child of God when you weren't even saved at all. Pastor, please don't mind that. Don't, don't mind that. So, she, she knows very well that I was born again before we got married. As a matter of fact, I was the keyboardist in my church. And we were there in the same choir. 
So I don't know how she conclude that I'm not, I'm not born again. My brother, do you know you can be a keyboardist or even a member of the choir and not be born again? Okay then, tell me, why are you no longer a keyboardist or among the choir again in your church? Sir, I took a break new. Hey, I gotta take that break and work, man, and you know, make money. We need that money. We both know that you are not doing internet business. Although you call it internet business, but you are profiting from the gain of unrighteousness. And God does not love that. Sir. But God Himself is love. Yes, God is love. But he hates the wicked every day. Psalm 7 verse 11. Um, who is the wicked, sir? Anyone who is not on God's side. Anyone who has not surrendered their life to Jesus Christ. And everyone who is eating and profiting from the gain of unrighteousness. They are the wicked. Except they repent. And sir, because I'm into Yahoo business. Eh? So that means I'm hitting the gain of unrighteousness? But it is not a legitimate business. Uh, yes, I, I know, sir. I know. But you see, I'm using my brain. And I, I'm using my intellectual abilities. And I also obey God. So you see, in Matthew 6, I will, I will read that part for you. Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24. Yes, sir. It says, no man can serve two masters. For he that he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will owe to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. So you know what, Pastor? For now, I choose to love mammon. Then I intend to make money, amass enough wealth for myself, and then come back to serving God. But that is a dangerous decision. You know, you have the opportunity to return to God and serve Him now. The unrighteous mammon you are trying to amass now will be useless and meaningless because you cannot spend it for God either now or in the future. He will not acknowledge it or accept it. Rather, you will be asked to do restitution. Restitution? Yes. Pastor, <laughs> how do I go about that? That is why you quickly need to and urgently need to repent and save your soul.
process may be tough The process may be rough I'm gonna wait 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 For the product to be strong For it to last I'm gonna wait Pray and stay The process may be rough The process may be tough I'm gonna wait 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 For the products to be strong For it to last I'm gonna wait Of my points in time. Will I wait? Will I wait? Oh, I'm gonna wait. Until my dreams come. Oh, Don't keep me safe. Yeah, we wait, we wait, we wait. Ah, we wait. Oh, 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 oh. All the days of my points in time. I will wait for you. No matter what comes my way, hey, keep me stay, oh, keep me stay, Lord, keep me stay, Lord, keep me stay, help me to wait for you all the days of my points and time. Oh, will I wait? In my change, come.